This is a tutorial for console multiphysics and try to simulate the magnetic field of a permanent magnet. So first of all we need a permanent magnet. In this case we're going to use one from K and J magnetics. It's going to be a 5 millimeters by 5 millimeters by 5 millimeters um, an ND FEB magnet grade uh, N42 and if you go to the website, to the K and J Magnetics, you're going to find the specifications. And with the specifications, you will see that you can be able to simulate the magnet. So this is what we want to, to achieve in console multiphysics. So the first thing that we need to do is the um, M versus H curve. So you can measure this using a VSM. And as, you, as soon as you have the information, uh, you're going to have a plot like this, like the blue one. This is the M versus H. Uh, for this one, um, we are plotting here um, the H field, but in Teslas, so we multiply by mu sub zero, and the M field in Teslas, so we multiply it also for mu sub zero. And what is important is for COMSOL, um, we are only going to use the second quadrant, this section here. So if you zoom in, you're only going to have this piece of information here. Uh, and why? It's just because the M field uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be opposed in direction as the H field uh, inside the magnet. So, so that's why you, your H field is going to be negative and the M field is going to be positive inside the magnet. <laughs> and the two key values here is the remanence B, a B sub R, that uh, I just converted from Teslas to... Uh, kilo gauss, uh, it's going to be 7 kilo gauss, and the um, intrinsic coercivity that is going to be 8 kilo gauss. So if you go to the to the same website and you see this is from the KNG magnetics, you're going to see that for that M42, you're talking about 13 kilo gauss uh, uh, in the remanence and about 12 kilo gauss in the intrinsic coercivity. Uh, when I measure the properties of this one, it's a small, uh, a little smaller. So you took the information of this quadrant and you save it in a txt file. And when you save it to a txt file, you're ready to go. Um, so let me open console. And how to start? How to start simulating the magnetic field? So we, I'm going to use uh, console 5.1 and I'm going to start for the model wizard. <clears throat> so you just hit the model wizard. and in the model wizard, the first step is just to uh, select the domain. We're going to do a 2D simulations. And, and what is the physics? So for us, the physics are going to be in ACDC. ACDC, magnetic fields, not currents. So I'm going to add it. <coughs> it takes a while. And then I'm going to select the study. And the study is going to be stationary for this, for this tutorial. So I'm going to hit done. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, my first step, my, 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 my first um, task here is going to load the magnetic properties of, the, of, the, of this material. Um, so where I'm going to do that? I'm going to global definitions. I'm going to click here I'm going to say function interpolation because I already have the curve that I showed you before. So I'm going here, I'm going to file, I'm going to hit import, uh, browse <clears throat> and I'm going to use this permanent, mag this permanent magnet file. So this is just the fourth quadrant of the, of the H versus M. M. M versus H um, plot. I'm going to open it. It's just a txt, txt file and I'm going to hit import. And I can plot it. And you will see that I'm going to have that quadrant. So the, fir the first thing that we need for, for this <coughs> is to mm, give it a name. So right now I'm going to give it a name. The name of the function that we're going to call is mu0h versus 
I'm sorry, mu zero m versus mu zero h. That's the name of the function. So every time we call that function, it's gonna bring this curve. And the other thing that we need to do is <clears throat> define the interpolation. So my interpolation is going to be pi uh, wise cubic. This is going to be a finer a refinement between the points, the simulated points. And um, the extrapolation is going to be the end of the curve. What happened when there is no data for that? I'm going to um, I'm going to have hit uh, linear. So I'm going to assume plot it again <clears throat> that if we don't have information, this is going to continue for for a long time. But since our field is going to be always always positive, I'm always going to be inside this curve for the magnetic. I don't need that. What are the arguments? Because I'm using mu sub zero m and mu sub zero h, the result is in Teslas. So from Teslas to Teslas, I'm going to work with that. Okay. So once we have this information that we have been loading the curve, the second step it's going to be define the structure so i'm going to um <clears throat> i'm going to geometry and what are we going to do in geometry we are going to make two rectangles the first rectangle is going to be oh sorry first of all you need to change the length so in this case you you place your mouse over geometry and instead of meters you're going to use millimeters Find millimeters. Okay, now you can start drawing things. Millimeters. So your your material is solid. This is gonna be the magnet, so it's gonna be five millimeters by five millimeters. It's gonna be placed in the center. Um and gonna be all selected. So this is the magnet, and we are gonna load the properties to this. <coughs> but also it is important to define the air, the space where you're gonna simulate it, this. So you right-click right in geometry, you create a rectangle. It's um, it's also a solid, um, but this is not about the material. It's just about the table, the the, the kind of uh, graphic that you're gonna have here. And I'm gonna make one of 22 millimeters by 22 millimeters. That's gonna be my box, always in the center. <clears throat> but there is a trick with permanent magnets. If you if you make a, a box, imagine that we make a box here, and uh, you do not define well the the boundary conditions, the flux lines are gonna start curving around the edges of this box. So, so to in order to prevent that and to have a more accurate simulation, we are gonna define an infinite layer. So let me show you how to do it here. You go to layers. And you say layers on left, right, bottom, and top. And the layer thickness, in this case, we're going to use it at one millimeter, one millimeter layer. <clears throat> and you select. You expand this. And what you're going to have is in the middle, the magnet. Here is air. And all those layers here, this, this, these rectangles here, they're going to be the infinite layer. It means Try to solve the equation as if this section from here to here is meters or kilometers far away. So it will give up a pretty accurate uh, simulation of what is happening inside. <clears throat> so once you have the structure and you define the layers, now you need to tell console that those boundaries are infinite. So you go here to definition, right click here, and you go to um infinite element domain and in infinite layer domain you select manual and you start selecting all the boundaries that you think that there are the infinite this is the infinite so whatever is inside is going to be your your simulation this is going to be an infinite layer we are going to at the end we are going to get rid of this information but uh what what we need is whatever is inside this box, the 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter box. So, and we're gonna see this in the second part of this tutorial.